Good morning, everyone. It's Bertie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. Let me see if I can move this. No, that's not going to give us more light. I don't really like to turn this light on very much because I think it makes everything shiny. Okay, but it does give us more light. Okay, let's do that. I had the sun shining in. I thought that was kind of pretty. I have the door open on my art studio because I love listening to the birds in the morning. They're just so happy when it's cool out. I had my breakfast. Listen. Oh, I had my breakfast out. Um, well, we're going to have a visitor. He does not think life happens until he crashes the party. Um, I had my breakfast out on the Pepper, I love you, but you've got to go somewhere else. I gave you attention out on the patio table. I had breakfast out in the rock garden this morning, and uh, which I do a lot of times. And I have a family of Jenny Wrens. Why don't you go? Why don't you lay right over there? You lay right here, and you'll be right beside me. There we go. Um, I have a family of Jenny Wrens. I know, in a real world, somebody would just shut this off and start over. But you know what? That's just not Bertie's way. For the third time, I'll tell you, I have a family of Jenny Wrens that have set up camp in the birdhouse. And no, Pepper. Why can't you be like Snowbell and just come in and lay down? Carol's recrafted by Carol. Her Snowbell is such the perfect little cat. She just comes in and lays down out of the way and she's just perfect and Pepper's just got to be all up in your business. Okay, for the fourth time, the set of Jenny Rims, they were both this morning hauling in bugs to the babies and I just thought it was so cute. I thought, you know what? How blessed am I to be able to sit here and eat my breakfast and watch the Jenny Rims feed their babies. It's just I am so blessed. It's one, on one way you could say, woe is me because my body doesn't really allow me to work a full day. And I have to stay home and that makes you less on income and you have to stretch and squeeze and push. But And then on the other hand, you say, oh my gosh, what a blessed thing to be able to sit leisurely out at my table and watch the Jenny Wrens. Anyway, I was watching Miss Mo Moss Cottage last night doing her Painty Papers video. And, uh, well, that's not where I got this idea. She actually commented in my video yesterday and said she hadn't really seen how people actually build the book once they make their slow stitch cover. So... I thought, let's go make a book. Let's just do a book this morning out of the slow stitch cover. Have my handy dandy, high quality, custom bought, special ordered cat food box. And one flap minus the these thingies appeared to be perfect for my size. So I thought this is it. So I just cut it. You know what? Actually, I guess we could say today, Janet Nash would say this is welcome to another process video. <laughs> I could say this is a process video, couldn't I? Gosh, I love the way she talks. I'm not kidding you. There are times when the other day I was just not having a good day and I needed to go lay down, but yet couldn't. Like, you know, I needed to sleep, but my brain wouldn't let me sleep. So I turned on Janet Nash and I let her voice and her accent and the way she talks lull me to sleep. And I took a nap watching her video. And then later on, after I woke up, I watched her again and was conscious this time. 
Okay, I don't know. Sometimes I'm in the mood to do this and sometimes I'm not. Today I'm in the mood because I just happen to have the... I just, you know, sometimes I don't want to get up and go get my sandpaper, so I don't sand it. Sometimes I do. So, artist's choice. It happened to be laying beside my workspace, so I am sanding it, only to give it tooth for the glue to grab onto. Now, I am going to get a... I'm going to get something. Well, I didn't have to go very far because I decided it's right here in my paper bin. This is my painty paper that I tore off yesterday and replaced with another painty paper. And I'm going to make this the inside cover. And I don't really want to cut on that because I just put my painting paper down and I don't want to cut through it. So I'm going to trace around it and cut it with the scissors. Uh, there again, only because I don't want to cut through my painting paper. You cut it how you wish artist choice, as Lori Marie Jenkins would say. This will be the inside cover. Now, let me tell you what I always forget. If you want to sew pockets on or anything like that onto your inside cover, after you if this was cloth, if I was making my inside cover cloth, I would sew them on before I glue this to the cardboard, okay? Pepper. Okay, go on, darn it. Pepper. Ugh. Come here. I'm going to have to do something here. Okay, I'm sorry. I went ahead and cut it out because... I could hold it close to me and not worry about you guys seeing it in frames. So I went ahead and cut it out. He is mellowed out for the moment over here on my sewing area. All right. Now, what I was saying is, if this were cloth, you would want to go ahead and sew your pockets on now. Because... You don't want to sew through your cloth on the other side. If you want to sew pockets on now, you could do them on paper. If you don't feel comfortable just sewing them on paper, you could go ahead and glue this down and sew them on with the cardboard. It just doesn't matter as long as you do all that before you put this on. Because once you get this on, you don't want to see... A pocket sewn through. So, uh, let's see what we've got. Well, let's see here how this is going to... I'm going to go ahead and fold this one to give me the measurement. I'm going to try to fold, find where my center point is on the box. And that way I can distinguish my spine. What did I do with my marker? Because Pepper came through at about that time. Okay, so that would be my center of my box. This is technical measuring here, okay? I like this width for a spine. So I'm just going to put it in the center. I don't need to draw. Let's just be rebels. I don't need to draw no line. I'm just going to bend it. Try to get my... So I kind of know what I'm doing. I don't know why. I just want to know what I'm doing with the spine. There we go. 
Okay, so this kind of gives me an idea of what my box is going to look like. And I'm a little off, I think. That's about that big. Yeah, I am a little off. You know what happens when you're a little off? You just do some cutting. Not too much though, because then you end up having the other side long and you go back and forth, back and forth. Before you know it, you've got a micro mini journal going on. That's good enough for me. I'm happy with that. Okay. Now, I have to be kind of careful because this had a perforated end on it for the for the cat food. So I'm going to stabilize that. I can see right now it's almost at my spine area. Where's my... I call this my bone folder, but it's really a butter knife made out of wood. Yeah, I'm going to stabilize that because I don't want that. There we go. Okay, let's see here. How do we want to stabilize it? Let's do it with... Let's put some athletic tape on it. I'm going to just do the whole, I'm going to do the whole um, perforated thing. I'm going to do this one because I've already got this angle cut in my tape, so I might as well utilize it. Right. Every single book, and, and you people that build books know this, every single book that you put together, you will do it in an absolute different way. I'm sure of it. Something comes along on every book that was different than the one before. You know, I've never run across perforated edges before, but of course this is the one I chose to use and we're dealing with it as it comes along. I do not do this on every book. This is just, you might as well go along on the ride with me to see reality. There we go. So, we've got our book stabilized, and you could have done that any way you wanted. You could have used paper, you could have used cloth, you could have used whatever you decide you want to use to stabilize it. If you have a perforated edge, you could have been very smart and said, oh, that's got a perforated edge. I don't think I'll use that part of the box. But if you happen to do this without thinking like I am and run across that problem, there you go. Now, I am going to I am going to sew some pockets on here. I think I'm going to make this one of them and I'll be right back. Okay. Now, this one here is too white. It was a napkin, and uh, I actually just whacked off the picture and folded the rest under so it would just make it a little thicker, more stability. I don't like that it is so clean. 
So I'm going to, ugh, I'm going to get some clean water. Okay. I'm going to um, just coffee dye it. I've got some coffee in here that has dried up. And I'm just going to water it back down. and grunge this up a bit. Grunge it up a lot. Now, I know you're probably all noticing whether I have this on here straight or whatever. I almost messed up this side because I didn't forgot to leave room for my bend, but it's okay. It's just barely in the pocket. And I'm not going to fret about it. I'm going to go ahead and use it how it is. Because remember, it is a junk journal. And this is my philosophy. There's too many other things in this life that we have to be tidy and just so about. Our art should not be one of them. This is my therapy, my escape, my time to just play and do what I want. I don't have to worry, is this straight enough for anybody or is this tidy enough? I have enough of that in my life, you know? We have to tidy our house, tidy our car, tidy our yard, tidy everything else. And this is not one of them for me, so... I'm just letting you know, if you see that I am slap happy, it's because I don't want to have to think. I don't want an adult when I do this. I want to bring out my child and do it the way I want to, the way, not necessarily, I don't know what I'm trying to say, okay? This is just a bunch of garbledy goop, I'm telling you right now. I just want to not think and just create. I don't want to have to think about is something straight, does something match, or anything like that. It's just not something I want to do. So here we go. Let me dry this real quick. Okay, okay. Now, I'm still not happy because this is too coffee dyed for me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get... A different brush maybe this one and I'm going to just put something else on there just to break up that just to break up the too much coffee dye okay now I don't want to waste that so I want to make sure I put this all over on my painty paper because that'll make beautiful painty paper one day. Spread that out so it can dry quicker. Okay, now let's glue it on. Let's glue her down. Get her done. I'm only using this because I'm just into, I have been without Fabri-Tac for a little while, so I'm kind of going through the honeymoon stage again. It's the only reason why I'm using it. It dries pretty quickly, so I'm going to go ahead and put that half down first. And when I'm done here, just because I want to, I'm going to sew around the outside. So if something didn't get quite glued down perfectly, it's okay. I'm sewing it, I'm sewing it down anyway. But if you're not going to sew it, then make sure you have your edges nicely glued so that it doesn't peel apart on you.
There we go. Whew. The smell is stout this morning. Okay, there's that. Now, the question is, do I want to sew around it now? Or do I want to sew around it after I get my cloth on? I don't know. We'll have to hold our cloth up and see what it would look like if we waited and sewed it around after we're done. Let's see here. Where's our cloth? No, I don't think I want to sew around it with my cloth on. I think I'm going to sew around it now. Okay, I need to tell you, I don't normally sew around them. I mean, I have, but it's not something I normally do. The main reason I sewed around this is because just for the sake of filming this, I hurried with my glue. I didn't take time and, you know, get it all. So I just did that because I wanted to make sure it held on good. And that's not something I do with every one. Also, when you're sewing, if you decide to sew actually anything with paper, I don't mind so much when I'm putting cloth on, but when I'm putting paper on, you could, when you have your sewing thread set at normal width, it'll almost perforate that paper and pull apart. So I usually stretch out my stitches on my machine so that it gives more surface space and it doesn't perforate that paper and make it want to tear apart later. Okay, so inside is done. Now, on the outside, I noticed one side of my slow stitch is wider than the other one. And you know what? That's okay. There's always a way to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of another, you can either, you know, do anything, another piece of material you could put, I'm just going to use my lace because I got it at the thrift store last week and I'm excited to use it. Use whatever you want, use more paper, use anything, more, any more cloth, whatever. I would really love, darn it, you can't rip this. I'd really love to be able to rip it. You can't. So, looks like we're going to have to, we're going to have to just cut it. I, and I don't like it to look just straight. But I don't know how to cut to make it look crooked. So, I like to rip it so it looks shabby. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a piece of lace off and put it on first and then put my material on. And then that way it'll have something hanging out and I'll distress it somehow. Maybe we could, you know, take our scissors and just pull it apart here and there. Oh, my painty paper and make it look raggedy. Okay. Uh, and then, once we get it on, I think I'll probably dribble some coffee around it. So first we have to decide, this is the front. We have to decide, so you don't put it on backwards. It's going to have to go like this, so our pockets are right side up on the inside. Okay? Don't forget, I'm telling you, from experience, you get excited and then you end up gluing your cover on upside down and then you're not happy. There's that part. I 
have to go clean the house today. <laughs> you know, I always like to do a video on the days I want to go clean somebody's house because I don't want to go. <laughs> oh, but I have to. I need the money, so that's why I do it. See some of that box showing up there? What can we do about that? What can we do? Let's just peel this up a little bit. Put a piece of pretty paper in there. There we go. Voila. Let's do the same down here. Get this cute little paper down there. This is actually out of a vintage book. I absolutely love this paper. And we're back to vomiting glue bottle. You know, after you've used them a while, they start vomiting. I don't know what the deal is with this glue. Okay, I think I got that on there good enough. I've got a little bit showing back here, too. Do I worry about it? No, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just not. I am going to have to put it on the material because it's crooked and I don't want to put glue on the book where it doesn't need to be. go. It's so funny. I was watching Moss Cottage last night and she was talking about, she says uh, how we are so much alike. There are ways that we are not, Helen. There's ways that we are not. She pays or somebody pays. I don't know if it was for their homeowners association or, um, or if she just, they just do, or what the deal is, but they have yard people. So, Miss Moss, Birdie ain't got no yard people, okay? <laughs> That's where we're a little different. And Miss Moss has a fancy schmancy dryer that sings her a song when her clothes are done. Like, not beep, beep, not an annoying buzzer like mine. It actually sings her a melody. Miss Moss, Bertie ain't got no singing dryer, okay? I have to hang my clothes out on the line most of the time so it doesn't heat up my house. I really doubt if you do live in a homeowner's association that you're even allowed a clothesline. Probably is not even allowed. Anyway, she was talking about her dryer singing to her and how the melody had got caught in her head. I am not kidding you. I I had to go back and listen to that like three times. Because I have had a melody. I don't even call it a melody. I call it a brain malfunction. I love to listen to music. Okay. I'm either listening to a Bible on uh, audio Bible while I'm outside piddling in the yard or I'm listening to music. And the last three nights, 
not last night, but before that. Actually, last night, I did not have anything in my mind. My brain did not malfunction. Three nights before that, I had songs, one song. Each night, it was a different song. And I had not even listened. Well, one of them was a commercial. One of them was, Nationwide is on your side. That was night before last. Okay, this is what happens. It'll be one uh, f phrase, I guess you'd call it, from a song because I don't know all the words. But whatever small phrase that I know is the part that my brain malfunctions with. And it plays it over and over to the point where it wakes me up in the night. Night before last, it was nationwide is on your side. Nationwide is on your side over and over and over. To the point where you just wake up going, oh my gosh, take it from me. Take it from me. I'm in, I got up to go to the bathroom. Look at that, Miss Moss. We just put a cover on. I mean, let's go ahead and put some pages in it. To the point where I got up to go to the bathroom and I was say I was praying, asking the Lord to please take it out of my mind. And while I'm praying, okay, my brain is still malfunctioning, going nationwide is on your side, over and over and over in the background while I'm praying. So I'm my brain is saying two things at once, and it was it's maddening. It's like a computer malfunction. It was literally a brain malfunction. And I just it made me crazy. So, so what I'm doing is, let me show you what I have. I keep these. I have a great big drawer. And as I make pages, I stick them in here. Okay. So I have a variety of all different kinds of things I can use for pages. And I just go in here and I pick out what I need to put my signature together, and then it's done. I can go ahead and put it in my book. So what we need to do is distinguish what size we're going to need. This size here would be a perfect sample page. So every page that we pick out needs to match up with this one. So I'm going to get my ruler. There it is. And I'm going to make this my sample page. But I don't want to whack this chicken's head off, so I'm going to cut it off at the bottom. And obviously on the side, because I don't want it sticking out too much. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through and tear up. I like to do three signatures of seven. How much time do we have? Do we just want to sit and do this together or do I want to let you go? 30 minutes. Let's just go ahead and play a little longer, right? If y'all want to go, you can go now. I'm just putting signatures together. And then I won't, I won't uh, bind it because you all know what that, you all know how to bind. A, so I won't need to do that in front of you. I just put these together while I gab. So I don't know. This is what I'm going to have to do with my brain malfunction. This is what's weird is that I can... I can listen to my Bible all day long on tape and it doesn't malfunction. Like it doesn't repeat the Bible over and over and over the scriptures I've heard, which I would rather it do that because, oh my gosh, annoying songs. And I don't know how to stop it. So I've what I've got to do is... I've got to stop. I've got to s stop listening to music. I know it's terrible. 
So the only thing I'm going to allow myself to listen to is worship music because I would rather have songs of praise going through my mind. If it's if my brain's going to malfunction, I would rather it malfunction on songs of praise than to do nationwide is on your side, which is this is the thing. When I listen to iHeartRadio, they usually have one commercial that they play after each, you know, ever so many songs on the radio, then it'll play a commercial. It's usually, well, it was nationwide, is on your side. That's the only commercial you hear all day long. So, of course, it imprints in your mind. So, I'm going to figure out my little iPod thingy. I know you can put music onto those. I have some old music on there in which a couple songs the other two days that something was running through my mind were off of my iPod. I'm going to erase all the music on there. I don't remember. They've been on there for so many years. I don't know how I did it. Maybe had my kids do it. I don't know. But I'm going to put all worship music on there. So there's no commercials. And then just worship music. And if something's going to replay in my brain, it's going to be worth something. You know what I mean? I don't want... I don't know what the Bible means when it says, let no idle word. No, something about idle words are not good. Well, in my brain, that's idle words. To me... My interpretation is idle words are just things that do not bring any real purpose or edification or meaning. If you're just talking it like me, I'm basically doing idle words right now because I'm just talking about absolutely nothing. But maybe what I'm saying will help somebody. You know, maybe my words aren't idle. One Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. One signature done, except I will go back through here. Let's just go ahead and do this one, okay? Instead of doing more of them, let's go ahead and finish this the way I would. Okay, when I say let's do this up the way I would, this is not the way I would do my own journal. I would put it together just like this, and then... I come through and decorate it later how I want. What I'm doing now is showing you what I would be doing if I were selling this journal as a naked journal for somebody to take home and decorate themselves. I always put things in it to give them ideas for the rest of their journey on, on you know, something they may want to do. This is a little pocket I made out of a tea bag. My flippy thing doesn't come down, but that's okay. I just take a paper clip or whatever you want. I just happen to have some of these clips in there. I just put it on. This one is pretty. I'm not going to bother it. This one here, um, let's do a belly band on it. Anyway, that's my thing. I, I too, Helen, have had stuff going through my mind, but it's not... It's not my my fancy dryer jingle. <laughs> I just wanted to tease you about that. <laughs> I didn't even know that dryers had a jingle. Honestly, I did not. I don't I'm not surprised by it because they people, you know, things have everything nowadays. Now, this is a belly band, of course. You guys all know that. Later on, off camera, I will sew across that. Wow, look at this that we cut off. So what does that do? That gives us an instant tag. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna put it on this page as a tag. A tab. 
tab. That's what I'm putting it on there as. Did I say tag? I meant to say tab. Now I have a little thingy, a little dingle dangle. I'm going to hang on that just because I have them and I want to use them up and I never think about putting these little extras on there. There. Now, a lot of times when I'm making a naked journal to sell, I will think, before I put a pocket on that page, I will think, you know, oh, that's a plain page. They'll want to decorate that. This page is kind of almost done. So that's where I'm going to put something. Okay. I don't want to put something on a completely naked page because then they have to somehow create around it. So I tend to, you know, do something like this. I like it that way better. I'm just, I'm just going through my thinking process with you. Lord knows y'all ain't going to think like me, but I'm just showing you a look into my mind in case one day science can't figure it out. You guys can say, stop, wait a minute. I kind of knew what she was thinking. Now, this, uh, I think this might be too big to put in here. Could I put it on this page? Yeah, I think I could. This is pre-made. I don't know where it came from, but I don't like it. It's awfully clean. I mean, it's not that I don't like it. It's just awfully clean. So let's, uh, let's fix that, shall we? Just give it a little bit of... Add a little bit of beauty to it. You know where I think I come from? Well, I think I get all this. And I, and a lot of us that are grungy like this, we come across this naturally. If you think about things that we have been actually like this all of our life. When I was a kid... We lived on a farm and we had a dump ravine. And I would go out to the dump ravine. I called it a dump ditch. Back on our property. my we They would take stuff they wanted to take to the dump and they would dump it in these ravines because it'd be a big washout and they would like to stop it from washing out so they filled it with junk. I loved going back to the dump ditch and digging through and finding old bottles. There'd be old med back then. They must have had glass medicine bottles because that's what I would find a lot of. Like cough syrup bottles and not just from my family, but from people, you know, in the past before them. There'd be old pots and pans and old ink pens and, you know, just cool stuff you'd come across and it would be treasure to me. And nothing could be too rusty or cruddy. It was just beauty to me. The way something would rust, like a can, tin can back then, the way the rust would eat these jaggedy edges in something was just beauty to me. So, now I like to make things look, and then it makes you think, oh my gosh, I've loved it since I was a child. Some people who would have never experienced that kind of thing, or been where they could collect treasure off the dirt road, or you know, whatever. I used to ride my pony down the dirt road and pull over to pick up stuff that I thought was cool in the ditch. Saddlebags on back, stick it in my saddlebag, take it home, put it in my tree house, or my. I also had an old van that my dad emptied out and sat it down on the ground for me that I could have patio out beside it that I could use it for my playhouse. I'd take it back to put it in my playhouse. I just had a wonderful 
childhood like that. I'm sorry. I took you down a whole memory lane there. I'm sorry. You may not want to hear that. <laughs> so I'm going to glue this in. Now, somebody else that's going to buy this book, they can come back and ink up the edges or whatever they want to do. I'm just giving them a starting point here. Giving them ideas of stuff they can do. They can write inside of this. They can put uh, a focal point inside of this. They can do whatever they want. I might have picked out too much stuff here to put on this. That's kind of big. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. We'll just take this part off. Miss Moss, I've probably given you more than what you bargained for here. I'm sorry. I hope you're getting the gist of what I'm doing without all my hoopla. No, I'm not going to apologize. This is part of my therapy. Is talking about all this stuff, right? Bringing back fun memories. It's all a part of my making myself feel better. So I guess we mustn't apologize, should we? Okay, I am going to glue this seed packet in here. And it's going to serve as a pocket to put a tag in. And I didn't grab a tag. I have a whole box of tags over there also. I could have just grabbed a tag out of and put it in here. Now, when it's my own journal, I don't do that. I want to make my own tag because your own journal is special for you. This is just for things that I sell hoping it'll be special to somebody else. There we go. There's a tag. Now, we have one more pocket to put in. If we wish, we don't have to. And it would be full of tags also. I think this is part of the tag, the pocket. No, it's glued together, so I'm going to go ahead and glue it. And this will give you a couple places to stick things. And then on this side here, I'm just going to stick a paper clip. Here we go. That signature is done. Now, I will do two more like this, and then I will bind it in my book. And this book will be ready for a new home. So there you go, Miss Moss. That's how I glue them in. Nothing special. Just uh, junky simplicity. I am going to go ahead and wind down and do a little, I don't know what, for myself here for a little bit. And then I'm going to get ready to go clean a house. Yeehaw! Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye from Birdie.